Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to another video. This time I'm going to look at 10 of my favourite double albums of all time. Um, these are all pre-CD age albums because once the CD explosion happened, artists seemed to fill um, every album they had up as much as they could, jam pack songs into their CDs and nearly every CD was the same as the double album. So I'm only going to look at stuff up to 1989. I'm also going to take a look at two albums that I think should have been double albums rather than single albums. Now normally people will say about a double album, ah that's good but it would have been better as a single album. I'm going to flip this around for two first before I show you my ten and explain why I think these two should have been double albums. The first one is the Electric Light Orchestra's Secret Messages and this is probably their worst album. Side 1 is actually quite good and Side 2 is pretty dreadful. Um, it's probably got one of their worst ever songs on it called uh, Letter from Spain um, even though Train of Gold, the song that uh, comes after it is also a contender for one of their worst. Um, it's such a disappointment. However they did release a couple of years ago a double album. Now it was originally intended to be a double album but the record company refused. And um, This here is really good and whenever it comes to songs like uh, Train of Gold and Letter from Spain they actually work a lot better and they're on two different records. One's in side one, or one, one is in side two and the other is in side three. And this is the reasoning why I think some single albums work better as double albums because in the double album setting a per song you tend to be more forgiving of it. And a good example there is the Beatles song Why Don't We Do It In The Road. If that featured on Sgt Pepper or even Abbey Road people would be going what on earth is that doing on that album? But because it's on the White Album they think yeah it's more forgiving I quite like that actually and it works well within the album setting so this here is really good and it's a pity it never originally got released um, there's some great songs that never featured on the uh, the original album especially things like Time After Time, Hello My Old Friend and Buildings Have Eyes but yeah it's an excellent album and thankfully they didn't put Beatles Forever on it because it was originally slated to be on the uh, original double album and it's dreadful. So that's one example of an album I think should have been a double. Second one is Mark Bowen T-Rex Sink Alloy and the Hidden Writers of Tomorrow or A Creamed Cage in August. Now the reason why I think this would have been better is that I know a lot of the outtakes from this album. Things like Saturday Night, All of My Love, um, Dance in the Midnight, Down Home Lady, Hope You Enjoy the Show, There's Five for a Start, Taking a uh, Truck on Tyke as well, and the B-Sides sitting here, and the B-Side of Teenage Dream, Satisfaction Pony, and we would have had a really good double album. And it means that you would have been more forgiving of poor songs on this, like uh, You Gotta Jive to Stay Alive, um, Nameless Wildness. So generally speaking this is regarded as one of his worst but if it had been a double album it would have been much better. But there was no way the record company was going to do this especially as his, um, he wasn't, he was, his popularity was decreasing and it's the same with Electric Light Orchestra they weren't as successful as they were in the late 70s. So it's a pity but I would like to see a double reissue of this with those outtakes. So that's T-Rex Sing Galloway. Okay, I'm going down to my 10th favourite. Now, two of these, first two, I'm not overly familiar with, but they're good enough to get in the top 10 because I've recently discovered them. Um, I haven't lived with them the same length of time as I have with the, have the others, but we'll start off with this one, uh, Stevie Wonder Songs in the Key of Life. I wasn't a huge Stevie Wonder fan, but my friend in America kept saying to me you really must listen to this album. I knew the songs like Sir Duke and I Wish and As but um, she sent me a few songs uh, via Facebook just to try out and I thought yeah this is really really good so I bought it and I really do enjoy it. 
and this just squeezes the Kinks Preservation Act 2 out of the top 10. Sorry Ray, but this is regarded as a classic and this one is really starting to grow on me. Another one that I'm not overly familiar with but I do know uh, the main songs and that's The Wall. Um, at the moment this is my favourite Pink Floyd album. It took me a long time to get to like this. I really persevered with this. But of course another brick in the wall, comfortably numb, hey you. Um, is it running like hell? Yes, this is an excellent album. I love it and it's great in the double album setting rather than CD. For some reason I enjoy it more um, on vinyl. Okay, more familiar ones and I've had this here since the very early 80s and this is The Clash London Calling and this is just brilliant. Um, I like a lot of the ones that nobody ever seems to talk about like uh, Coca-Cola, The Card Cheat, Hateful, Wrong and Boyle, Four Horsemen. I'm not as keen on London Calling and Jimmy Jazz, Lost in the Supermarket, but generally speaking it's an absolutely fantastic album and it is their best album and I do love that Elvis Presley parody cover, so that's London Calling. From 1969 and this is the Bee Gees Odessa, a nice felt cover even though you can, I've got the uh, sleeve on it. Yeah, this is the one that caused a rift between Robin and Barry Gibb over the single release. Uh, Barry wanted 1st of May, Robin wanted his uh, Lamplight. 1st of May came, up, uh, came out as a single and Robin took a huff and left the band. But this is an absolutely immense piece of work, you know, Sound of Love. The title track, Odessa, is absolutely fantastic on this. It's a really, really strong album from 1969, and it's their best of the 60s. So that's the Bee Gees, Odessa. Of course, from 1966, um, we have Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde, and there's not a lot you can say about this. Uh, stuck inside a mobile with Memphis Blues again. I want you. Most likely you'll go your way. I'll go mine. Visions of Johanna. And of course the awesome Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowlands. Absolutely brilliant album and the best album from 66. Sorry Revolver. But yeah, this wins it. What have we got now? All oh, right, from 68. And of course we have the Beatles. Um, yeah, this is one that a lot of people think should be a single album. I don't think so. I think it would be actually one of their weaker single albums, but because it's a double album, it's one of their stronger albums all overall. Um, I just think this is really, really good. And as I say, the weaker songs work really well in a double album setting. So, yeah, there's not a lot to say about this. The one-two punch of... Uh, Back in the USSR and Dear Prudence, it's hard to beat. Um, Revolution 9, I could have done without, but to be honest, I don't mind it there. Um, I prefer it to the last song, um, Good Night. I just don't like it at all, but the rest of the album is absolutely fantastic. It's like, it's, it's something different. That's what it is. It's something completely different, and you know, not two, no two songs are the same. Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, 1973. You know, side one is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Funeral for a Friend, Love Life's Bleeding, Candle in the Wind, and Benny and the Jets. Could you get any better? Um, the rest of the album is excellent as well. There's nothing I dislike off this. I suppose my least favourite is The Ballad of Danny Bailey. And um, what is it? I've seen that movie too, but. This is just high quality. This is Elton's best. It's real high quality. And um, this could have actually been released as two single albums and they would have both have been excellent. So Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Rolling Stones, Exile on Main Street. And this is the one, although I love it, I think would have ser been served better as a single album. It's got such great songs on it like Happy, uh, Rocks Off, Tumbling Dice, Sweet Virginia, All Down the Line, uh, even Turn on the Run. Um, I love it, but there's a couple of weaker tracks on here that just don't do it as much for me like Shake Your Hips and Casino Boogie. 
but overall it still gets in my top 10 double albums because of how strong those tracks are. So that's Rolling Stones, Exile on Main Street. Two more to go and Electric Light Orchestra Out of the Blue. Um, I said was there a better side than the side one of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road? Well I think there probably is here because side three of this is probably one of the best sides of music ever. Standing in the rain, big wheels, summer and lightning and the absolutely fantastic Mr. Blue Sky. And side uh, one's not so bad either with Turn to Stone, Sweet Talking Woman that's over and across the border. This is a really, really strong album. Again, side two is excellent as well. There's only a couple of weaker songs on here, like The Wheel, which is a little instrumental. And I was never too keen on Birmingham Blues. Now, there's another track from these sessions called Latitude 88 North, which, you know, would have been great on this, maybe instead of Birmingham Blues. But yeah, from 1977, this is an absolutely awesome album. And the last one I'm going to show, and this is <coughs> XTC's English Settlement from 1982. And this is the one with the huge, well, it's not a huge hit, it's one of the biggest hits though. It's uh, Senses Working Over Time, which is brilliant. It's got Ball and Chain on it, um, Jason and Argonauts, and No Thugs in Our House, uh, Snowman, which I absolutely love. Um, what's the other? There's quite a few here. All of a sudden, it's too late. I think it's really good. Um, Leisure is really good. Uh, Knuckle Down. Fantastic uh, double album. I know it was released in some countries as a single album, but I think this works better as a double album. So it does. And this is one of my all time favourites and probably my second favourite XTC album. Possibly my first. So, XTC English Settlement. Okay, that's my 10 uh, double albums um, that I think are the best there are. There, there's other ones as well that I do like, like Bruce Springsteen's The River, but that would have been served better as a single album. And as I mentioned before, the King's Preservation Act, which uh, I, I wanted to put in there, but I had to put the Stevie Wonder in. And another mention goes out to the Genesis Lamb Lights Down in Broadway, which, Broadway, which I really do like. But I'm not 100% into that yet, so it may get in at some stage. Okay, that's me for now. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope to have another video quite soon. Stay safe, everybody. All the best now. Bye-bye.